Hello everyone and welcome to the Lafayette Hall webinar. We are going to present a lot of information in the next 30 minutes or so about Lafayette Hall and what you can expect as a new resident here. My name is Ashley Staples. I'm the Residence Hall Director and I will be guiding us through the webinar. I have two co-presenters with me today, Vanessa Matthews and Ashley Fublin, Michelle Fublin. Uh, Courtney Haywood cannot join us today. She's our Residence Hall Resource Manager. I'm going to let Vanessa and Ashley introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa Matthews and I'm the Residence Hall Assistant Director here at Lafayette. I'm very excited to meet you all and hopefully you'll find this webinar useful. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Michelle Fublin or AM is totally fine. I am the RA on the 11th floor. We have uh, an exciting presentation for you today, uh, but I wanted to take a second and just introduce a couple other members of our building leadership team who are not joining us on the webinar today. As I said, I'm Ashley, you've met Vanessa, and Courtney cannot join us uh, this afternoon, but Chris Nolan and Grace Poon are two of our graduate students here at NYU, and they serve as graduate assistants within the hall. So if you see any of these five people, we are the leadership team, and then we are joined in our efforts by 32 fabulous RAs, of which Ashley Michelle is one, as well as a res resource center assistant, and his name is Sergio, who helps make sure that all of the resource center operations run very smoothly. If you have any questions during the course of this webinar, please note them down. We will have contact information listed at the end, and you are welcome to follow up with any questions that were not answered uh, via email, or you can call our resource center, and we can try and get you the information that you are looking for. Here we go. So a very common question is, where is Lafayette Hall? As you can see on our Google Map um, insert here on the left, Lafayette Hall is a little bit away from the main part of the campus, but we are still in a very vibrant and accessible neighborhood, closest to the 1, 2, 3, 6, and Q, R, and J trains. We are on a great little corner uh, that kind of brings together the, the vibrant neighborhoods of Tribeca, Chinatown, the Financial District, or FIDI, Little Italy, one of my favorites, and Soho, which has great shopping. Um, the other residence hall that's closest to LAF is Broom Street, which is a couple blocks away. And we are about one mile from the main part of NYU by the Washington Square Park. And that takes about a 15, 20 minute walk to get to. Um, common attractions in our neighborhood is Canal Street Shopping, Street Fairs, and the Brooklyn Bridge, which is a few, walks, a few blocks away. So 80 Lafayette Street is between White and Franklin. Those are going to be the cross streets. Um, we have 17 floors here. Um, we do skip the 13th floor because we are in New York. Um, every room has a phone, which I've never even used, but we have one, um, access to campus cable and Wi-Fi. Um, every room has um, a kitchen fully functioning with a micro, not microwave, sorry, um, with a stove and um, running water and a refrigerator and then um, air conditioned in the rooms, in the, in the bedrooms you're going to have um, an extra long twin bed, a desk and a dresser. Um, every floor has a trash chute and recycling room, so please use them. Don't let your trash get piled up in your room or leave uh, dirty bags of trash in the hallway. Washers and dryers are um, located on almost every floor. Um, pit house, unfortunately, you don't have one, but you can then use every other floor's um, access to laundry, so that's pretty awesome. And then you can buy the laundry cards downstairs. They're right next to the ATM when you first walk through the um, dorm. And then we also have a music room, an events room, a recreation room, a chill room, quiet room, and computer labs. So basically, the music room has a piano in it. Um, the events room, we have a foosball table and a pool table and a TV. Um, and then the rec room and chill room and quiet rooms are kind of just like spaces to um, study in. We also have a resource center located on the first floor with all of those rooms that AM just mentioned. It's open every day from 10 AM to 10 PM and serves as our hub of information and activity for the hall. Uh, there is a printer and printing paper here, so if you need to print a paper for class, you can talk with your RA about how to send it to the, I, the information technology system that then allows you to swipe your ID card and print that down here in the resource center. There's a Keurig machine and filtered water, so if you need a morning cup of coffee, come on by. There are DVDs and board games. We participate in Bike Share, which is a bike sharing program run by our Office of Sustainability. You do have to attend a short one-hour training in order to participate as a, 
as a bike sharer, um, but we have several bikes that you can borrow for free to go to class, to take a, a biking tour of the city, whatever you'd like to do. We also have brooms, vacuums, and moving bins in the resource center. It's where you pick up a guest pass. If you're going to have a guest who's staying for maybe two or three nights and you would like them to be able to come and go after they're initially signed in, you can get that signed by all of your suite mates and then they can have access to the hallway on their own, which is really nice benefit for um, some of our guests who are coming to sightsee when we have to be in class. Uh, they, this is where you get both your mail and your packages. There's a mail room just off to the side of the resource center, and you actually need to come between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. to pick up your packages in person. There's always excellent staff members waiting with a smile to help you out and help you get whatever you need. And there's also much more. We do some programming out of the resource center. We try and make it your one-stop shop for so many things. Uh, so it's definitely a place you'll get to know and love once you're at Lafayette. Here's the lounge space that AM referenced earlier. We do have a brand new pool table where you can, um, you know, compete and play. We have uh, the balls and cues are, are available for rent out of the resource center, as are the balls for the foosball table. And we do have a flat screen TV mounted on the wall in our lounge space in addition to the music room and the quiet room. Um, I hear that we may be gaming, getting a gaming system, which is pretty exciting, but don't, don't uh, count on that 100%. Hopefully it'll come through. And then here was the computer lab I was talking about earlier. Um, it's great. As you can see, we have some pretty sick, nasty um, Macs there, which are awesome. Um, and then if you need to print something, you can just come down here and use it and then send it to the printers that work in the resource center. We also have the privilege of having two FFIRs, or faculty fellows in residence, who live with us. Uh, the first that I will introduce is Matt Mayhew, pictured there with his wife Sarah and his son Eli, and then baby Sawyer, who was just born last October, is not yet in the picture, but that will be coming soon. Uh, the Mayhew family hosts a pancake breakfast every month in their apartment, and they also do cupcake, uh, cupcake cook-offs, dinners, sponsor some trips to Broadway. Uh, the Faculty Fellow in Residence program is a great way to get to know some of our NYU faculty members outside of the classroom and in normal daily life. Our other faculty member is Fred Mayo, and he is in the School of Continuing Professional Studies. He loves PB&J and PJs, which happens every Tuesday in his apartment. Uh, he also is a connoisseur of all things that are awesome, um, including cheese, chocolate, uh, food in general. He's a culinary expert. And so it's really great to have Fred as a part of our team here. And he is pictured with his partner, Maurice. And you will get to know both Fred and Matt and their families uh, through your time here at Lafayette. In addition to our student staff, our professional staff, our FFIRs, uh, we also have our public safety officers that are here in Lafayette Lobby 24-7. Um, they provide security for our residence halls and aid our staff members in enforcing guest policies. Um, just as a reminder, non-NYU non students must be signed in at the public safety desk by you, the host. Um, they must present a valid photo ID like a driver's license or a state ID, but no passports will be accepted. We are very sorry about that. Um, the overnight guest policy is the maximum is three consecutive nights per month or a total of six days per month that are non-consecutive. Um, guest passes are recommended, as Ashley mentioned before, when you're in class and you want your, your guests to be able to get in and out of the building with ease, maybe explore a neighborhood on, your, on their own. Um, getting a guest pass out of the resource center would be the optimum way to help them out with that. Okay, so move-in day is quickly approaching, and I'm sure you guys are all excited. Um, so make sure you come to Lafayette at your designated time. We're trying to do that so uh, the top floors can move in quicker than because they have to go higher um, in elevators. So when you get here, you're going to be directed um, to a space to get your three keys. And yes, there's three because one's for your front door, one's for your bedroom, and one's for your mailbox. You're going to receive a welcome packet and a temporary ID. Um, unfortunately, approximately 800 of our residents are moving in on one day, so be prepared to wait in a little bit of, um, of a line if you're going to use one of our super handy, awesome moving bins. Um, 
and we only have six elevators and only one cart bus at a time. So like I said, just be prepared to wait, but it'll definitely make the process easier. And it's great too because you'll have the chance to meet one of our faculty fellow and residents. They'll be on site that day to answer any questions you might have or if you just want to like say hey to them. So that's great. Um, all the RAs, there's 32 of us in total, are going to be dressed in the same shirts. And I'm pretty sure that one of the RAs is always going to be on the floor. So you get to, you're going to say hey to them. Um, and we'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Um, if you're like, oh, hey, like anything, we'll be more than happy to help you with that. If you um, are wondering what you should bring and what you shouldn't bring, um, the website's available right here. And that's um, good to know, like, because we do have a kitchen, so you're going to want to make sure you bring, like, plates and cups, but there's still some prohibited items, so make sure you take a look at that if you have any questions. Continuing with some move-in information, we, on move-in day, actually open up all of three of our entrances, Lafayette, Franklin, and White Street. Usually we ask that everyone comes into the building through the front entrance by Lafayette, on Lafayette Street to check in with the security guard, but on move-in day, the more access, the better things roll. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have designated parking for move-in day. There are spots around the building, uh, but our public safety officers will be there to sort of guide families as they come in with their vehicles and park, uh, but please make sure that you're following all posts at street signs because there's no, uh, there will still be normal police enforcement by the NYPD of parking regulations. So please make sure you're reading signs and parking appropriately. It would also be a good idea to have a plan for where you will move your car after unloading. If you consider that the immediate area around Lafayette will probably be full, it'd be a good idea to check out the parking rules and regulations in either another neighborhood or identify a parking garage that you can move your car to so that we can stop, drop, and go. Our public safety officers will be helping every family to make sure that they're connected with uh, getting a moving bin and getting the stuff out of the car and then we ask that you just continue to move your car to a parking space and then come back uh, and help your student unload and settle into their new space. In addition to all of the opportunities that we've, we've talked about already, we would really love for you to get involved, involved in our Lafayette community. The RAs and professional staff are already working on some awesome welcome week activities like Chinatown bus tours, uh, Broadway show, mini golf, and much more. So please be sure to sign up for your favorites once you are in the process of moving and checking in. Um, RAs, just as a note, do you have quick get to know you meetings with all the residents on the floor. These are called base meetings. Um, your RA will be contacting you to schedule a time, so please let them know this is an exciting way uh, for the RAs to get to know you since there are so many folks in the buildings. We want to make sure that everyone's on the radar and feeling a part of the community. Um, if you want to get connected, in addition to that, your RAs do host weekly floor programs with free food at every single one. Um, if you have any ideas for programs that you'd like to see, Every RA is more than willing and welcome to uh, hear your ideas and, you know, even offer you a helping hand to make that happen. Um, as a note, the first week's program is mandatory. Just to go over some general housekeeping procedures for the building and some university-wide policies, and also to receive your building stickers that will be permanently affixed to your ID so you don't have to walk around with a temp anymore. So Welcome Week starts off on Sunday, August 26th and continues throughout that whole week. And transfer students, which we have a ton here at Lafayette, which is awesome, are invited to go to the Presidential Welcome Reality Show. Um, and then returning students are greeted with other programs in the, our Back to the Square campaign. Um, but here at Lafayette, we have some of our own programs too. Um, every um, day we're going to have a super cool uh, social, like we have, for example, like a Greek life, um, a senior social, a transfer student and then international student social. So that's just a great way to meet people who are kind of going through the same thing that you are. So that's kind of nice. Um, we're going to have neighborhood tours because like uh, we were saying early, earlier, um, AD Loft is kind of the middle of everything. So we'll get to kind of see um, where what's around here and then you can also see like where should I buy groceries and what kind of sort of stuff uh, around the building. So that's really neat. Um, people will be able to go play putt-putt, um, do rock climbing. We're going to have a trip to Smorgasbord where we're going to eat like tons of awesome food. And then we're going to go to a rooftop farm called Brooklyn Grange. Um, we're going to have pottery cl um, classes and tons more. So make sure you keep an eye out for what you think is going to be um, interesting. 
In addition to all the programming that we start off with, we have an ongoing hall-wide hall council uh, called SOLID, Students of Lafayette in Democracy. Uh, we really view the hall council as the advocacy and full hall programming arm of our community. Its responsibilities include community service program, advocacy, but really it's whatever you as a student and a resident of Lafayette Hall want to happen. That's what SOLID is committed to making happen. A couple of popular programs from last year include Relay for Life, midnight movie premieres, a snowboarding trip, uh, and there are always new and inventive things um, that are going on weekly, basically weekly, which is great, coming out of our Hall Council. Uh, generally, every General Assembly meeting, which is where the body and the body of the Hall Council is all of our residents here in Lafayette Hall, come together. Uh, there's always free food available, which is a great way to supplement your New York City budget and diet, uh, and also be involved in the life of Lafayette at the same time. Uh, mentioning the budget is always a great way to get people excited about coming to SOLID's meeting. There's a lot of students who live here, and we are granted our Hall Council budgets based on the number of students. So since we're the biggest hall, that means we have the biggest budget. And we are always looking for new and exciting ways to spend it, and especially ways that really resonate with our student population here at Lafayette. If you're interested in joining SALA, there are a couple of different ways you can do that. The executive board has been revamped this year, and we have a lot of exciting um, positions that are available to run for um, during the election period. Um, the president, director of training and development, business administration, service, events, advocacy, and communications. Um, additionally, if you feel like your schedule is a little bit too packed and you don't want to join the e-board, there is a general assembly that is available to you. Uh, you. You can either serve as a floor rep um, who has voting rights on the initiatives that the e-board presents, um, but you can also attend any general assembly meeting, which will be every Monday at 9 p.m. in the Lafayette events room. Um, if you would like to join the e-board, if you were involved in hall council in a previous hall or student council while you were in high school, um, you should definitely attend an info session during Welcome Week. Keep an eye out through your NYU email, but also through your floor RA and just general building programming and advertisements and marketing that are going to be um, providing the information for when these meetings are going to take place. Um, Additionally, if you can't make it to any of these meetings, but you still would like to be involved with SOLID, we would love for you to do that. Just contact any RA, either your floor RA or any of the RAs that you may see in the RC who can help you out in accessing that information. So additionally to just floor program SOLID, faculty fellow residents, we pretty much have a program going on every single week through um, a uh, called a collateral. So if you're on a college budget, which we all are, but you want to do um, awesome things in the city, this is definitely something you should look forward to. We have stuff um, like international food and discussion, um, solid. We have um, a music collateral. We have fraternity and sorority life, dinner and a movie, pretty much you name it, we're going to have it going on and there's stuff all the time. So it's definitely keep an eye out for the flyers when we post it up on your floors and throughout the building. A couple of logistical things. Uh, generally, we try and make sure that your space is 100% ready and that you know everything that you need to know going in, but there's always questions that come up or concerns or something that maybe we didn't read all the way through. Uh, so if you, at any point when you're in your space, have a maintenance issue, you can fill out a work order and you can see the work request there. You can also just Google NYU work request and it's the first thing that pops up uh, and you can click on that and fill that in. And that will let our housing and facility staff know that there's an issue in your room that you would like to have fixed. You can also call in that request if for some reason you know you figure it out but then you have to go to class and you're trying to walk there um, you can call that number and save that in your phone and you can actually call and they'll place a request on your behalf if it's an emergency and emergencies are usually like floods or fires or things of that nature that are facilities concerns but primarily they're a health and safety concern you should call or contact public safety their number will be at the end of the webinar um, and it's a great number to also have in your phone uh, so in any emergency, even if it's a facilities issue, call public safety so they can get the right help to you as quickly as possible. 
The next bullet uh, speaks to our policies. It's really important as a student in housing that you know our policies. You sign uh, that you are taking responsibility for all of our policies when you sign your housing license, uh, but there's a lot of information in our housing license and also in our policy documents. So now that it's sort of getting time for you to move into the residence hall again, uh, we encourage you to take the time to review the policies and also your rights as a student and a resident here in the halls. If you ever need help after hours, so the resource center uh, is open from 10 to 10. Generally, the building leadership team will be in the office between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. The RAs are on duty all of the time, or not all of the time, but every evening there's an RA on duty starting at 5 p.m. until 9 a.m. the next morning. So they are a point of, con uh, of safety and help for you after hours. And the way you get in touch with them is the public safety officer in the lobby. Public safety is open 24-7. There's always a public safety officer, at least one on duty here in Lafayette. And if you need an RA, that's the person who can connect you with that RA after hours. We'll be giving you a lot more information when you come in to Lafayette, when you check in and move in through a welcome packet. Uh, so make sure you read through that, even if it's not the first day, within the first 48 hours or so, just so you know your resources. And if you need anything or you have a question you feel like hasn't been fully answered, please visit the Resource Center or ask one of your RAs on your floor. So that concludes the content portion of our presentation today. We're going to move into some frequently asked questions, things that parents, students, uh, their family members, sometimes their extended family members, call into our office with all the time. Um, and we'll direct those to an appropriate person amongst us to answer. Um, so the first question, and we get this a lot, is, is it safe? Uh, many people have visited and New York at some point and come to this particular area and that's a question that they have. Is it safe for my student to live there? It seems very far from campus. Um, what does that look like for someone living there all the time? So I'm going to ask AM who's lived here in Lafayette for a full year now to answer that question. Is it safe? Yeah, um, I definitely think living in Lafayette is 100% safe. Like Ashley said, I've lived here for a whole year. Um, and I have parents call me all the time, they're like, oh, like, it's near Chinatown, like, what's the deal? But like I said, it's 100% safe. We have security there 24-7, so, you know, nothing sketchy goes on. It's, like, pretty cool there. Um, and then plus, I like the area because it's around all the different neighborhoods, so there's always great food. So definitely, it's, it's safe. Don't worry about that. And it's really good to live here, too. Thank you. So another piece of the distance question is, so what is it really like to get to campus? Is it is my student or am I going to have trouble getting to and from campus? Um, is there a bus? Do you take public transportation? How do you manage that? Vanessa, can you talk a bit about that? Absolutely. Um, I'm actually new to NYU, so I've been frequenting walking from Lafayette Hall up to the main part of campus at Washington Square Park. Um, the walk is, is a great walk, walking straight up Lafayette Street. Um, it's about a 15, 20 minute walk. Um, you can also walk up Broadway, which gives you exposure to a lot more people on, on the sidewalks, but also more shops and stores and restaurants if you'd like to stop and take a peek along the way. Additionally, like I said earlier, we've got a lot of subway lines that are very close to Lafayette that will take you to and from campus easily, um, as well as throughout the rest of the city. And um, NYU actually has a shuttle service that comes to Lafayette Hall that will transport students for free uh, from LAF up to the main campus so that you can get to your classes and everything on time when the weather is bad, when you're in a bind, um, and it's usually pretty reliable as well. Great, thank you. Uh, another question that we often get is, can I, there's mail and packages there, can I send mail from Lafayette? Um, and I'll, I'll take this one. The answer is uh, no, mail cannot be sent from Lafayette Hall. There are several, there's post office as well as several mailboxes in the area where it's really easy to, you know, send a letter off to your grandmother um, saying that you're loving and enjoying college. Uh, but that's not something that we provide in the Resource Center. Um, the other thing that we do not provide in the Resource Center is a, is a pickup point for UPS or FedEx or anything like that. There's a FedEx Kinko's just a couple of blocks away, so if you need to mail something, um, we generally, anyone in the Resource Center can help you figure out what the closest place to mail that thing from um, is. We also, we do accept packages clearly and also mail, so that's 
not impacted by this at all. Uh, but we wanted to note that we don't accept packages for incoming students until close to their move-in date. So unless you actually live here, we don't accept your package. So if you are planning on shipping a lot of belongings to Lafayette Hall, please try and make the arrival date of those belongings after you will already have checked in. So if you're planning on not checking in on move-in day because of a, a, a scheduling situation, and you're planning on arriving on August 30th, you should try and make sure your belongings are arriving on August 31st. Um, so bring your essentials, something to sleep on, and then get all of the rest of your stuff here that next day so that you can have the time you need to settle in. Uh, all right, so continuing on, another question that we get is, um, do most students have dining plans? We're a little bit far away from campus. Do people stay on campus a lot? What are the options there? AM, do you want to talk about dining plans? Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually do have a dining plan. I have one that's like 150, 15 meals over the semester, but I feel like dining plans are definitely like a personal preference. Um, my roommate last year didn't have a dining plan, and every single night she would come home and make her dinner. Um, so if you're one of those people who's like, oh, yeah, like I like to make my own food or I'll just do takeout, then dining plan probably isn't for you. But I actually do like the food on campus, and um, my schedule, I'm on campus a lot, like every single day. So, I mean, it works for me, but it's definitely a personal, like, oh, are you going to be one of those people who minds making dinner the other day or going to take out, or do you need the convenience of just having something right there, like on campus for you? Great. Thank you. Uh, another question that we get often is, I see that it says that there's a ventilation gap in my room. What does that mean? Vanessa, can you talk a bit about what ventilation gaps are? Absolutely. Um, I actually didn't know what a ventilation gap was myself until I arrived here at Lafayette Hall. So that is the question that is very pertinent to our population. A ventilation gap is... Um, what it looks like when you walk into your apartment, it kind of looks like an incomplete wall from the floor to the ceiling. Lafayette, um, as, a, as a building architecturally, has very tall ceilings, and most of our units only have windows along one wall. So in order to allow for airflow, light flow, and air conditioning flow, there is one wall that tends to be not reach the ceiling in one of the rooms so that the entire space, um, the common space, and the whole apartment can get a healthy flow of air and light um, circulating through there. Um, this tends to be an interesting point um, and characteristic of Lafayette, but our students tend to make it work from year to year. Um, we do have roommate agreements and living agreements that our students can, can work through and work around to come to, to great compromises when tackling uh, the, some of the challenges that are present with ventilation gaps. Great, thank you. Um, and Vanessa mentioned air conditioning, which is another question, it's several, one of two questions we get a lot when students first move in. Um, one is, are you sure my air conditioner works? Uh, because I am not feeling any cool air. All of our air conditioning units are actually sort of window air conditioners. They're not necessarily set into a window. Many of them are set into a wall um, above a door or above a window, but they are window type air conditioning units. And there is a switch located near the air conditioning unit on the wall um, that controls the power to the AC unit. So if your air conditioning is not working when you first get here, try flipping that switch and see if that uh, gets the air conditioning running for you. Um, if that still doesn't work, then please come down to the Resource Center and let us know um, so we can help you troubleshoot and get that air conditioning working in your room. Uh, the other question that comes up immediately is, I can't figure out how to work the laundry machine. It doesn't seem like it's taking my student ID. Uh, here in Lafayette Hall, you actually have to get a separate laundry card. There are two machines in the lobby by the public safety desk that distribute laundry cards. And so you come down, you do have to pay for the card. It's a $5 fee for the card, but that's one time for the whole year. And then you can add money to that card. Uh, it only takes credit cards, so please be prepared for that. Uh, but you can add money to that card as needed to do your laundry laundry in any of the laundry rooms located on every floor. Um, a final question that we get now that we're talking about laundry and staying clean is sometimes parents or students ask um, if we provide or allow cleaning services in the residence halls. Um, can you tackle that one, AM? 
Yeah, for sure. So when you first arrived, your room was already clean, so that's good to know. But unfortunately, we do not allow like pe like maids to come in, maid services to come in and clean up your space. So it's kind of up to the resident themselves to clean up their spaces. And um, how clean you want it, I guess, is going to be between you and your roommate. But down here in the resource center, we um, do have uh, Swiffers and brooms. So that's something to definitely note. And then also we're very excited to announce that we will be having free toilet paper this year. So that's another thing you can find down here with cleaning stuff. So be sure to um, come down to the resource center for that as well. Great. Well, thank, uh, thank you all for being with us for this approximately 30 minutes that we've spent together. Um, I hope that this was helpful to you. As you can see on the screen right now are several contact information pieces. Uh, the most pertinent ones, I would say, if you have additional questions following uh, viewing this webinar, are the Lafayette Professional Staff email, lafayette.hall at nyu.edu, and the Lafayette Resource Center, um, 2 and 2 992 Both of those are contacts that you can reach out and ask any remaining questions and we will try and get back to you. Um, a couple of the answers could probably be found on the main housing website um, or the Lafayette Hall housing website, but if you can't find that answer, please reach out and ask because we definitely want each and every one of you to arrive feeling ready and prepared for the experience here at Lafayette Hall. So I want to say thank you to our presenters, Vanessa and AM. It was great to have you here. And Yay. we're looking forward to seeing everyone uh, on the 26th or after on move-in day and during welcome week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.